So, you want to play an investigator. Well, do you have an interest in the greater mysteries of the campaign? Do you want to be the smartest person in every room you walk into? Have you read enough murder mysteries to know where this is going? Or do you simply want to have a brain sharper than any brawn? Well then, the investigator is the class for you. Is that it? Is that what? When he just met, we're gonna go look at a flat. Problem? We don't know a thing about each other. I don't know where we're meeting. I don't even know your name. I know you're an army doctor and you've been invalided home from Afghanistan. I know you've got a brother who's worried about you, but you won't go to him for help because you don't approve of him, possibly because he's an alcoholic, more likely because he recently walked out on his wife. And I know that your therapist thinks your limp psychosomatic quite correctly, I'm afraid. It's enough to be going on with, don't you think? The name's Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street. Afternoon. He's always like that. Dateline. New York. Midnight. When you work as long as I have on these cold city streets or dank dungeon corridors, you learn real quick that it takes a certain class of character to cut through the tangled webs and see through the gaping holes that surround any dungeon master's plot. Sure, a wizard with his plus five wacky spells can make an investigation check to pick up on a clue or two, but they wouldn't see it the way a real investigator would. The truth isn't something as simple to uncover. Secrets don't come cheap. Sometimes they take greased palms or calmed qualms. Sometimes they take blood. Your blood. Your partner's blood. It doesn't matter. But you can bet when an investigator is on the case, we'll see to it that the truth comes to light. It was half past the hour when she crept up the creaky flight of tall steps and up to the door of my office, her hesitance as palpable as the cigarette smoke that clung to the air like a vice. I could tell by the way her silhouette lingered in the frame of the opaque window what she was here for. Hesitance. So a love affair, then. There came no knock, just the quiet twisting of a brass handle and the sliding of a door rasping outward. They entered the room, but not without the door closing with a click. With my back turned to my skyline window, I'd almost considered that this might be an orderly call. But when the second click came, I knew it could only be one thing. Trouble. The light of the cigarette caught my face in the window. Is this how everyone conducts business where you're from? No sudden movements as I snuffed the smoke and turned. What I saw, a sight so shocking I'd swore and shot already. Attached to the other end of the revolver I was staring down, was a stunning starling of an elf in an emerald dress. Sorry, detective, but I heard you're the best, and if you're in less of a position to say no, then all the better. Her voice a whisper, green eyes stabbing through the darkness like stilettos. Certainly easy to be the best before you put a bullet the two past me. Hands raised in surrender have reclined, and gestured with a nod that she might do the same. How about you tell me a tale first, and then I can decide if you need to shoot me after. My bravado didn't fluster the femme fatale, of course, but the bemused smirk told me I told her all she needed to know. That she was in the right place. She sat, the gun comfortable in her lap. Silence hung in the air. Next comes the part where she wants to know my credentials. Next comes the part where I want to know your credentials before I'll let you help me. I heard you're good, that you're an investigator. What is it that you do that makes you so special? Now, it was my turn to smirk. Elementary, my dear. It all starts when we're on the case. As an investigator, we think of our adventures as cases waiting to be solved. This gives us a special activity we can do during exploration, and a reaction we can use when the moment strikes. Pursue a lead, and clue in. Enough of the guessing games, detective. What does any of that hogwash mean? Well, you see, every ten minutes, we can spend about a minute examining the details of a clue that we're aware of. Could be a person, a small place, a thing, you name it. As long as we're pursuing that lead, we get a slight edge on our investigation surrounding that very subject. But it also opens up the use of some of our more special feats and talents. And with being able to maintain up to two or more cases at the time, we're no stranger to pulling on multiple threads and seeing what comes loose. And what about that other thing you mentioned? Well, 
allow me to clue you in. At the same frequency of about 10 minutes, when someone like you, a friend, contact, partner in crime, makes a check of their own to investigate the subject of our lead, we can give them the same bonus we get from Pursue a Lead. Sweet, simple, and to the point. Alright, alright, so you're no slouch of a gumshoe, but I need to know if you can hold up in a fight. And you certainly don't go striking me as no fighter, sir. Looks can be deceiving, Dollface. Then start revealing, Detective. Some people use strength to hit, some people use dexterity, some people got fancy tricks and magic. But tell me, can you use intelligence to hit? Hit someone with your brain? What, you saying you're a psychic now? Nothing of the sort. You see, any good investigator always has a strategy. They can see how a battle will play out in their mind several moves ahead of the rest of the game. In a fight, we can make a special kind of attack by devising a stratagem. We choose a creature we can see as a single action and roll a d20 right then and there before the attack is ever made. We get to see and know what the result is before we commit to actually making a strike. And if we do, we get to add our intelligence as a hit bonus instead of strength or dexterity, provided the weapon meets a certain criteria. And the cherry on top is that that creature we choose the subject of any active leads we got going on, we can do this as a free action instead of a single action. Only once per round, but sometimes one shot is all you need. Especially when you got strategic strike to go with it on the side. It reads an awful lot like sneak attack, but only when we use our strategy. My my, so you can contend in a ring. That's all well and good, but I get there's more that you're not telling me, detective. What is it? Well, there are things that you don't know about. Every investigator has their own methodology. Each of us savvy in our own special way. Me? I consider myself a student of empiricism. My eyes are keen and as a special free action I can recall knowledge with an intelligence skill like our arcana or society, or seek to search an area with sense motive or perception every 10 minutes. But more importantly I gain an extra feat at first level called That's Odd. It allows me to sense a clue in any room I walk into. And what of those other method of what's it's? Well, you got others like interrogation for those with social savviness, forensic medicine who heal and deal in equal order, or alchemical sciences which damn near turns them into an alchemist that specializes in potions and tools. Fascinating. But wait, you said there was one last thing? Good ear. Last but not least is our list of feats, the real bread and butter of Pathfinder classes. There's more. There's always more. You got feats like that, Zod, that I get from my methodology, sure. Or about red herring at second level, giving us a keen sense for avoiding the wrong lines of inquiry, being a walk and lie detector at fourth level, all the way to being so suspicious at 20th level that everyone you have met and will ever meet becomes part of your infinite list of suspects. Like all Pathfinder classes, this list is customizable and expansive, and far too long to explain concisely, but you can find links to all these things in the description below. Well, color me green with envy, detective. You've convinced me, and now I need your help. What's the job, doll? Because I'm sure you're asking yourself right now. How do I play an investigator? Oi, we ain't done yet! This mustn't register on an emotional level. First, distract target. Then block his blind jab. Counter with cross to left cheek. Discombobulate. Dazed, will attempt wild haymaker. Employ elbow block and body shot. Block feral left. Weaken right jaw. Now fracture. Break cracked ribs. Traumatize solar plexus. Dislocate jaw entirely. Heel kick to diaphragm. In summary, ears ringing, jaw fractured, three ribs cracked, four broken, diaphragm hemorrhaging, physical recovery six weeks, full psychological recovery six months, capacity to spit it back of head, neutralized.
When you get down to brass tacks, using our analytical minds, we investigators can overcome all sorts of problems. From the practical to the phantasmagorical, wielding knowledge as a weapon, studying everything we encounter, exploiting every weakness and using every trick of the trade. Like rogues, we get an efficient means of keeping up with even the most brutish of thugs, and extra skill feats that expand our ever-extensive repertoire of skills. But unlike rogues, any inspector worth their salt is living and breathing the modus operandi and knowing is half the battle. Though we might not be throwing fireballs like the intelligence-based wizards, or selling our souls as the witches might, with keen insight, wide array of skills and knowledge from our studies, and understanding enough to unravel any mystery, you can bet your bottom dollar that this investigator will crack your case. And that's how you play investigator. But will the detective solve the case of the lady in the emerald dress? One of life's many mysteries. Happy sleuthing. Thank <laughs> you. 